So I looked at the Day in the Life of an Aquatic Biologist video recently, and I saw that it had over 60,000 views. And there's probably like 40 unanswered comments on that video. Definitely never thought that it would blow up that big when I made it. Uh, initially, I made it for my friends and family. And I just wanted to take some time to answer those questions and also talk about how I got to that point in my life where I was in French Polynesia. I was diving seven days a week in this like beautiful location um, and just you know studying coral reefs and going out and exploring the island in my downtime. So uh, I think my path in marine biology kind of started when I joined UC Santa Barbara and I didn't have a plan when I joined like People ask me like, oh, did you like go to that school because you knew it had a great marine science program? I knew nothing about the marine science program. I joined as pre-biology. I was going to go to med school. That was that was the plan. And then I joined and I saw that they had a scuba diving course at the recreation center, which is like the gym at the campus. And I thought it would be pretty cool. I'd always, you know, been a good surfer or an okay surfer. So I thought, you know, I'm pretty ocean oriented. I started scuba diving or learning how to scuba dive through their open water program. And I was not good at scuba diving when I started out. I had like ear cleaning problems and it was kind of a struggle, but I just really liked being underwater. And I kind of thought that maybe that was something that I wanted to do for a career. And walking around campus, I saw a flyer for a lab. It was called Santa Barbara Coastal LTER, which stands for Long Term Experimental Research. Oh man, I don't remember. But SBC, Santa Barbara Coastal LTER. That was the lab that I joined. And, you know, I just did the grunt work. I did data entry into Excel spreadsheets. So much data entry. It was pretty brutal. I'm not going to lie. But one of the great things that came out of that was when summer rolled around, they offered me a full-time position to scuba dive with the lab and help out with the research in the field. And this was, I was actually going to be scuba diving. I was actually going to be working with the lab. One prerequisite to uh, scuba diving with the lab is I had to do an additional certification, which is called an AAUS certification. This allows you to dive with a research university. And taking that course was also pretty difficult because I had just learned to scuba dive. And in the span of like less than a year, I needed to become you know, proficient enough that I could work as a diver in pretty tough conditions in the Santa Barbara Channel. Um, and I just did a lot of diving on the weekends. I was really committed to improving my skills and just becoming the best scuba diver I could be. Uh, it wasn't enough. I definitely like was pretty rough in the AAUS course. And even into that first job, um, the funding for that job was provided by a research experience for undergraduates, REU. And that's something that I would recommend that any person that's interested in marine science look into, especially if they're in college. The funding for REUs, um, is pretty nice in terms of how much they give and also like um, the programs that they, they fund are pretty aligned with um, a lot of the work that students want to be doing. So I did that RU, I was diving, you know, anywhere from three to five days a week in the Santa Barbara channel. And it's pretty cold. Like I definitely learned a lot about scuba diving, about research, about field work in general. I was so tired, I remember like waking up like 6.20 a.m., being like in the lab at 7.20 a.m. and getting back to my like house at like 4 to 6 p.m. And they were just long physical days. But the diving was amazing. And even though there was all this like physical uh, like strain, like <laughs> strain on my body, I really liked um, the fieldwork aspect and I knew that it was something that I wanted to pursue further at that time. So... Summer ended, my three month stint with SBC ended, but you know, they offered me a part-time job during the school year. And this, uh, I wouldn't recommend to do this, but I definitely skipped a lot of class to do this job. There's no way you can be like, like you need to be on that boat from 7.20 to like five. I did not go to any class during that time. I would like do my best to like slot all my classes into like, you know, basically three days and I'd have two days free for diving. You can do that in college um, if you go to like some universities, but uh, UCSB, I <laughs> I couldn't quite do it, but I I, did, I just skipped class in order to to make that that diving job work, and just continued diving through that year, and then kind of heard about another lab 
um, also another LTER, long-term experiment, but that was with Morea. And that, if you've seen the Day in the Life of Aquatic Biologist video, that is the one that I ended up going to French Polynesia. But I had to put in my work, I had to join their lab, I entered data, it was not the most enjoyable thing. I think I like counted uh, like brine, I, I, I counted a lot of like invertebrates through a microscope, I remember, and entered data about fish, stegastes. And it was uh, pretty mind numbing. But, you know, I applied for their, their REU program once again to go to Morea for three months over the summer and got accepted. And I was packed my bags and you know brought all my scuba gear out to Morea. And that, that what you see in that video um, is, you know, I was doing all of this coral reef research and this instrumentation work. And it was really building upon what I did with Santa Barbara Coastal. Um, that one was seven days a week, though. Like, we did not get weekends off. We worked every single day. So even though it looks like I'm just messing around in, like, paradise, the reality of the situation is, like, it was also pretty strenuous, pretty physical. And I do remember, like, I hurt my back lifting the scuba tank out of the boat one time. And I was, like, I could not walk for, like, two days because my back hurt so bad. And then for like another like five days after that, I had to be like in the office entering data. And it was definitely like a shock to be like, man, you could like really like, if you get injured physically, you are not in a good spot. Um, but, you know, the diving was still great. And I still really wanted to continue my career in marine science. So what did I do after the events of that video? Um, obviously, I still make a lot of scuba diving videos, but um, I just want to talk a little bit about what happened in my career after that. So I came back from Maria and continue, I, I got my job back with Santa, Santa Barbara Coastal. They weren't too salty about me leaving them for, for warmer water and, you know, continue my job during the school year. And I also got my dive master scuba certification. So that allows you to lead certified divers on um, dives, you know, across the world. And um, I extended that. I thought I'd really like to teach scuba diving to other people. Like I had been taught my freshman year at college. And I actually ended up getting my instructor certification, <clears throat> which was like, has turned out to be one of the more valuable things that has come out of my uh, marine biology experience is that instructor certification, um, I really like teaching people and it's something that I do still now. And I think if you're interested in scuba diving and you like, really like it, uh, going through this path of becoming an instructor is something that everyone should consider because I don't think there's not enough instructors out there. And the more there are more instructors that are out there, particularly young instructors, I think the better it's going to be for the sport. So I had this instructor certification, which is pretty hard to get I'm like pretty high up in the diving world at least in my mind and I applied to the Monterey Bay Aquarium to you know do work for them and uh, if you've been to the Monterey Bay Aquarium you know like how prestigious this aquarium is both as um, a research hotspot but also just um, you know it's a really cool place to work and I, I got accepted so I was going to work at the Monterey Bay my third year of college and then um COVID hit, uh, <laughs> which that is its own story. So COVID, the pandemic affected everyone differently, but what did it do to the research divers? Well, I got let go, like pretty much immediately. There was just no way we could have done social distancing on our small research vessel. You got to take off your mask to put on your regulator. It's just like, it's not great. Plus if you get COVID, it was a respiratory illness, right? We didn't really know how that was going to affect um, scuba divers. And people that got COVID, like they had to get cleared out by our dive safety officer. And that process could take literally months. Um, and they just, they couldn't work during that time. That was just how it is. Safety always has to come first, especially when you're diving for a university. So I did not work as a diver for a long time. And I was just kind of like floating around at my house. Uh, didn't really know what to do. Um, just kind of like was doing school, I guess. And, you know, I did that for like a year. Um, 
And, you know, the pandemic started to end eventually, or not, maybe not end, but like started to, to let up a little bit. And the vaccines came out and it was looking like maybe I could kind of get back into marine science. So I started applying for jobs. I was, you know, pretty close to graduating at this point. And I was looking for lab technician roles or um, like research diver roles, kind of similar to what I was doing in Morea, where I didn't have a specific project, but I was just helping out with whatever the lab needed. And it's really more of a diving and field work focused role rather than a research one, which is what I wanted. And I could not get a job. Um, I like couldn't even get to the interview stage. And that was really frustrating to me because I had felt like I'd put in a lot of work. Um, I had a lot of diving experience. I had this instructor certification and I could not find a job. Um, I don't know if that was... Um, if that's still the case, whether the job market is as competitive as it is. Um, I think now my impression is it's easier to find jobs. Like there's a lot, I see a lot of postings up there. Um, but I think the reality situation is like a lot of my friends and I were going for the same stuff and they had very similar resumes to mine, similar experiences. Some of them I think had more research experience. And I think that was really what gave an edge um, that I didn't really have. I didn't really do research per se throughout my time at UCSB. I mainly focused on my diving and the physical nature of like field work. So, you know, maybe I was a great diver, but I didn't have experience, um, like a lot of experience with this particular research project. And I think that was kind of a weakness that I just, I knew I had, but I didn't really care because I just wanted to be in the water all the time. So, that kind of brings me to the end point here. It's like, well, I graduated, I'm, obviously I'm graduating college now and I'm not doing marine science. I decided to leave the field. Um, part of it was like frustration. I couldn't find a job. Part of it was like, I got offered a role at a software company and I looked at the salary and I was like, oh yeah, like I think I could be happy here. Um, and uh, part of it was I was a little bit concerned about my health and I was, you know, always thinking in the back of my head, especially when I was in Berea and I hurt my back. It was like, well, if I get injured and I'm going for this lab tech role, well, that just means my career is over. If you rupture your ear, your career is over. You like throw out your back and you like can't lift heavy tanks. Like you really shouldn't be in this role anymore. You can do research. Like, of course, um, you know, there's plenty of great, great jobs in the research field, you can do a master's program, a PhD program, and just kind of dive like to supplement your project to gather that data. But what I really wanted to do was to be a lab technician or, um, you know, like a, like a dive safety officer or something, someone that's really involved in the diving of it. And you just can't do those jobs if you're like physically not at your best um, all the time. At least I wouldn't be comfortable doing those jobs if I didn't feel that. I was at my best and uh, yeah, just kind of like a slew of injuries towards the end of my, my time at college. I was just like, man, if I had been diving, which I wasn't because of COVID, then um, yeah, I wouldn't have been able to work. And it just felt like the time was right for me to get out. And so I did. Um, but, you know, I guess my closing thoughts in marine science and my path through it is it's a great field. And I think if you have a passion for it, you should do it. Absolutely. No question about that. Um, I think doing the diving, like you shouldn't get lost in it though. I think it's like why people get into marine science, but it's not why they stay. I think they stay because they find a research project that they are really passionate about and they pursue it with an academic, like ac academic focus in mind. Um, like for example, maybe you come in and you really are interested in aquaculture. You like really want to like, I don't know, raise scallops or something. And you join a project and you're like doing scallop farming and you really like that. So you do a master's in scallop farming and you like learn how to do it, you know, more sustainably or at a higher rate. And you could easily make a career out of that. Like there's definitely, um, you know, applications and grants and like companies that are going to pay you probably a lot of money to use your knowledge. Um, to, to benefit you know, the world. Um, so I think that is the path you go, is you go into it and you are looking for a project that you're passionate about and that you want to develop yourself in. 
I think doing what I did where <laughs> you're just diving all the time. Um, looking back at it now, I don't know if that was the best idea for my career. I think I was really hesitant to invest my energy into any one field. And ultimately, I think it was for the best for me, but um, maybe not the best thing for everyone.